Hello. In this video, you'll learn how to make programs that respond to you when you run them. In this course, we will refer to the person who runs your program as the user. In the exercises, you've been playing the part of both the programmer and the user. You have been both the person writing the program and the person running it. So far, you've written programs that interact with the user in a one-way fashion. Your program does something, it prints something, end of story. In this lesson, you'll learn how to write programs that ask the user for information. In order to do this, in order to incorporate what the user types into our program, we need a way to retrieve what they type and a way to store it. We can use a variable to do the second thing, but how do we do the first thing? We can with the input function. This is a function that prints a prompt and retrieves text from the user. Here's what it looks like alongside a variable and a print statement. The function is called input and it requires you to include a string in parentheses. This is the prompt that the user sees before they start typing. What happens when you run this, and we'll see this in a second, is the interpreter actually pauses on this line and waits until the user types something and presses the enter key. Once the user is finished typing, whatever they typed is stored in a variable called name. Then, as we've done in other programs, we can print out the variable name. Here's a slightly shortened version of the program we just saw, and below it you can see roughly what happens when we run it. Notice that the type of the variable where the input is stored is str or string. This makes sense because the user entered a bunch of text. But what if the user enters a number? Turns out the type of the variable is still str. This is a problem if you want to perform some mathematical operation on a number entered by the user. The program at the right causes an error because the type of the variable number is str, and you cannot use the plus operator on a str and an int. Fortunately, Python provides a handy function called int that converts a string into an integer, as long as the original string really contains a number. Let's take a closer look at this line. There's a lot going on here, and it's easy to get overwhelmed by the parentheses. The key is to evaluate from the inside out. First, the input function runs as it normally would. Python prints a prompt and pauses while the user enters text. Then, whatever the user types is given to the int function, which converts it from a string into an integer. Finally, that integer is stored in the variable called number. Let's step through what Python does assuming the user enters the number 22. The input function prints the prompt, and the user types 2, 2, and the enter key. Python then replaces the call to input with the string 22. The int function then takes the string 22 and turns it into the integer 22. This is what ultimately gets stored in number. This process we just went through is what's known as function composition, something you'll see more of as you continue programming. When reading code that includes function composition, just remember to evaluate from the inside out. 